Heresy can be defined in religious application as a dangerous error in beliefs held to and maintained in a dissenting way by individuals within the visible church. A heresy opposes some chief or substantial truth which is grounded upon and drawn from the Holy Scriptures. Genuine heresy is certainly an evil to discern and avoid, but doctrines themselves can vary with the subjective views of the one interpreting Scripture. And therefore, heresies also may be only subjective to someone's opinions rather than based upon good biblical grounding. The Apostle Paul was regarded as a heretic by the Jewish religious system Jesus had saved him from, but in fact he had once held the same beliefs as those of his accusers. Yet a lifetime of studying the scriptures under a reputable teacher only led him to the persecutions of true Christians that he thought of as heretics. Oh, how our opinions may change! And only far too many times one may be qualified as a heretic only because his views disagree with our own. Things changed for Paul after he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he began to see his opinions were in error. But for a heresy to exist, there must be some scripturally established truth that it deviates from, and Paul needed to know where he'd gone wrong. And for this God, the Holy Spirit, led him away into Arabia for three years so that Paul might learn scripture directly from him without the inf interference of any man, not even the other apostles. God had cut out the middleman. By the time the Jews were able to put Paul on trial, he was considered a full-blown heretic, and they sought to put him to death. Paul gives this testimony during one of his trials in Acts 24. He says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. It's an important point when Paul says that he looks at the entirety of the scriptures and not mere pieces. It is a core error when we regard only parts of the Bible and not the whole. It can cause honest misunderstandings in our own studies, but can also be deliberately misused to deceive us. Now, Paul was teaching heresies according to the opinion of the Jewish leadership, and that's how the truth seems to those who will only defend their own errors. So many times, it isn't about concern for what the Bible really teaches, but it's about keeping the status quo for our own comfortable practices, and perhaps for filthy lucre. <laughs> Do you recall how the Jews sought to kill Jesus and the reasons they were forwarding for it? This is what they said when they were amongst each other. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. In the past, people were called heretics if they said that the earth wasn't the physical center of the universe, or if the earth was round and not flat. Of course, the Bible never said that the earth is the center of the universe, nor does it say the earth is flat. It actually does say it's round. The charge of heresy was often used just to get rid of dissenters and to seize the wealth of their goods. As I've studied the Bible deeply over many years, I found that visible church practices are steering away from the absolute truth that the Bible brings forth. We can't answer for what other people may choose, but will we stand strong for the truth of God's word in light of the opposition we may face? Extremely few today desire to hunger and thirst after the righteousness of Christ that will bring about changes to the way they do things. Instead, they end up trusting in the goodness and sincerity of their own works and not the gift of salvation that Jesus has already bought for them. Every Christian will come to the point of testing when taking a stand for the truth will cost us what we had formerly held dear. But this cost must often be paid even among those who claim to be our brethren. In the end, we are servants of Jesus Christ alone and not of flesh and blood. Remember that Jesus is the very truth of God incarnate, and even he was not accepted by his own family and synagogue. And it is a glory for us to join him in his sufferings. Take a stand of obedience to the full teachings of the entire Bible, and you'll know the peace of God that no genuine heretic will ever experience. Please remember to check out the description for the related scriptures. May God bless.